Hello. Oh, there he is. Sorry, I just came across one of a round uh, joining a little bit late, but uh, just in time, I would say. Yeah, uh, we were just talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> that Alan. So you're another Alan. We've had like, I think, three or four Alans today. So it's the day of the uh, Alan. It's just the best name. It is, isn't it? Yeah, what can we say? <laughs> <laughs> you can call me Al. <laughs> All righty, guys. So, um, well, let's kick the. Um, welcome to the roundtable, IBM roundtable about multi endpoint management APIs beyond REST. So, let's uh, start with a short introduction. We've got uh, Newton and Alan. Alan, if you want to go first and just give a, a quick introduction to yourself. Yeah, sure thing. Hi everyone. My name is uh, Alan Chat, another Alan on this on this panel, and I work for IBM. I'm specifically responsible for what we are doing around Apache Kafka and basically all things event driven and event streaming. And on this round table, actually, we're really excited to talk about uh, uh, like share our point of view and listen to others on the on basically how these two worlds are coming together. Okay, right, and you. Yep, um, I'm Newton Picconi. Um, I also work at IBM, um, but I'm on the API side of things. Um, so the uh, Alan's on the event side of this um, merging of technology. I'm on the API side. Um, I've been kind of in the API space at IBM for um, about five years now. Um, and I mean, my my main um, my, my day job, I guess, is uh, owning our kind of software as a service business. Um, but uh, I've really been enjoying doing this uh, this um, beyond rest uh, multi endpoint management um, stuff as well. So very excited to on this roundtable kind of share our point of view and hear people's questions and kind of get a good discussion going. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a good cue if you're uh, sitting in the audience and uh, you have some questions, feel free to just type them in and I'll, I'll relay them out. We've been a bit dry on the questions today, guys, but I really hope in the session there will be some uh, some really hard questions for you guys. Um, so to set the stage, as you've just said, you know, it, it, it's about, you know, beyond rest. So it, it's like, you know, async, GraphQL, Kafka, et cetera, you know, all of these new emerging, like, you know, uh, technologies coming through uh, and, you know, how we can uh, bring them into the API management space. So, well, well, let's kick that off a little bit and say, okay, um, in terms of industries that are doing this, you know, going beyond rest, um, are there any particular industries that are at the forefront of that or moving faster than others? Yeah, so I, I can start this off, Alan, give my point of view, and you can um, fill in what I miss. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I think that this is, uh, I, I've, I'm seeing this across industry. Um, I'm not seeing one industry specific where this is really blowing up. I'm kind of seeing it across industries because I mean, in today's world, we just have data everywhere and demand for data in real time is just becoming more and more apparent. And with that demand, we're seeing technologies um, that are coming up that um, are, are better at doing um, real time data um, kind of delivery than others. And one of those is, is Kafka um, and like uh, and event streaming um, and I, I see that kind of across industries. The the industry example I always like to give um, is at, at least for this because it's a, a really kind of vivid um, uh, analogy for for um, use case I guess for for laying it out is um, transportation. So um, like a, like an airline. Um, so and specifically at an airline it, a mobile application that they're building at the airline um, and. Um, with airlines, I mean, data is extremely important logistically across um, all of the all of the kind of little pieces here and there that come into um, getting you checked into your flight, getting you um, like your baggage where it needs to go, getting food and fuel and everything um, where it needs to go in an airport. And um, timing is everything um, when it comes to that. So uh, sharing data between teams throughout an airport and an airline is is vastly important. Um, but even for a mobile app, so um, it, looking at um, both REST API um, par like uh, paradigms, functions, and um, event-based um, uh, kind of types in the same application where let's say you have your check-in function, um, which is that request response interaction that we see and that REST APIs do so well. Um, 
but then we 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 also have uh, so in the same application you need your customers to be able to check in, but then you also um, for the the flight delay um, function that's more of an event based um, interaction. And I mean, in a perfect world for those developers at that airline who are building that mobile application, um, you want to have it uh, so that they can log into one piece of technology, um, one single developer portal um, where they can come um, and see both uh, that that post check-in API, um, as well as the flight delay, um, like Kafka um, stream, um, that they can kind of build into their experience from one place and get all the credentials and have it all done in, in one piece of technology instead of having to do that across them. So, I mean, that's just one example. And I know we were talking about industries here, but that's one example of the industry, uh, of like an industry where um, this, this um, the, the different kind of functions of request response versus like an event-based interaction, um, they're both hugely important and um, kind of having having them in one place um, really helps and we really see that across across industries. So I'll, I'll stop talking now and uh, Alan, you can. Um, yeah, Newton, I, I just in. wanted to build on exactly what you were saying about this being cross industry. I mean, Newton, uh, that was a great example of like within specifically transportation, but what the reason that it's so cross industry is because as you were saying, it is, about the availability of data, get pushing data to the applications. And it's that new interaction model that is, is driving the need for these like uh, new style, styles of interfaces and specifically kind of event streaming. And so Newton gave a great example in, in, um, uh, in transportation, but it, uh, the reason it's everything is, is because every industry is transforming the experiences they're looking to offer their, their clients. So you think of retail and you think about kind of online store, click and collect, kind of more real time engagement with clients. You think of kind of finance and all of the innovations in FinTech about how they are um, really taking new financial products to a wider audience. It's all about more engaging experience and that's driving this push to additional forms of interface to existing systems. Right, right. That, that's 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 good. What, what about um, well, REST APIs? Do you foresee you know these trends now, event APIs, etc., all the new stuff coming up? Do you see them replacing REST APIs in the future? So I'll start again, Alan. I, I mean, very much uh, no, I don't. And I mean, we saw the same thing with with SOAP API. When REST APIs came out, it's going to replace SOAP, um, and it's just going to be REST APIs um, existing from here on out. And we saw that, uh, I mean, for the past um, for the past years, there have been uh, use cases that are specific to SOAP APIs that you need SOAP APIs for. Um, and REST APIs is just a whole new world that we opened up, um, and they very much coexist in um, in organizations today and, and in applications that are being built. And we're we're expecting the same thing to happen um, with with these uh, kind of beyond REST, so moving to uh, more events and, and GraphQL, we see these things coexisting and just really serving different use cases and um, and kind of going back to that airline example, there are different data interactions that, that, that are needed. Um, you do have that request response that you're always going to need where um, maybe it doesn't make sense to have that like uh, the uh, application pushing the data um, versus the kind of requesting and getting it back. You're going to have both both kind of interactions needed um kind of going forward and and i very much don't see this as as replacing um rest mm. yeah and right. maybe i could just say a, a few words about like the the event streaming and kind of the gap that that's that's filling because i think all of these examples that that we've been talking about as we go beyond rest they're all filling a need for a, a new type of interaction so you think of graph and you think of actually a more flexible way of querying uh, large data sets um, in in the kind of new way that gives you kind of more options when you're building your application specifically around streaming um, this breaks down into two main uh, forms of interaction one is about pure notification like a much easier way of being notified when something happens so you can take action on it but there's another pattern that's actually really popular in in the kafka world uh, which is around data distribution change data events being used to to basically move data closer to the applications that, that need it and it's those two kind of holes around notification and data distribution that is driving like specifically the streaming interfaces okay so so why now um why is the timing right for this right now 
Maybe I could start uh, on this just because it's um, it's an area that I, I guess as Newton introduced us, um, he comes from the API background, I come from the event background. I think event-driven paradigms are not nothing new. I mean, uh, for anyone in the industry that has uh, been been around, you'll have heard these talked about like uh, before the millennium, in in the 2000s, uh, 2010. Like they they keep coming in in cycles. I think the real reason why it's it's uh, there's a real focus on them now though is as coming back to the original point I was uh, making in the first question, which is around the kinds of experiences we're building. Um, the more data driven you want them, the, the closer you want the data to your application. Um, and again, uh, these kind of interfaces help you address those problems. The more responsive and reactive you want that to what else is happening around. So if you think about in retail, multi-channel experiences, that requires you to the application to be notified when things happen. So it can react and, and uh, pop notifications up to the user or drive new forms of interaction. And it's it's this shift to more like companies looking for new ways and more engaging ways to connect with current and new audiences that's driving those kind of interfaces. But I don't know, like from a uh, like an API point of view, uh, Newton, do you want to say anything about like how this has been an evolution from REST as well? Yeah, and I know I know REST is is the big one that we're talking about right now here at IBM. Um, we're coming out with some cool stuff that's that's coming out around um, event management um, into our API platform. Um, but I mean, just in general, uh, we're looking beyond REST. Um, so this kind of multi endpoint management is what we're kind of coining this and calling it. Um, so it's not just events. That's the hot one that we're doing right now. Last year we did GraphQL, um, but I mean, I'll just double down on what Alan was saying. It's about uh, like the reason it's happening now is because um, across industries, all, all uh, like integration needs are needing um, new ways to interact with customers, new needs of, of how to interact and interact differently. Um, and that's really driving the, the push of different technologies because I mean, you can look around at any time and you'll see hundreds, thousands of different pieces of technology out at one time and um, deeper integrations between those um, can always be made. But it's a matter of uh, like the market that we are in and the the customers um, needing use like ha having use cases for these technology integrations and us kind of delivering that based on um, customers asking for it. Um, so I mean, um, Alan nailed it with with events, but it's it's we're seeing it across technology. So I see what we did last year as. Um, sorry, go ahead, Alan. I was just going to say, you know, are you bundling all of these things under, you know, the banner of being an API, right? So beyond REST, I mean, REST is a style of API. They're all still APIs, right? That's that's kind of one of my questions. Yeah, so they're, yeah, definitely um, still APIs. And I, I guess um, from like when we're when we're looking at the, the term API, we're kind of broadening that. Right. Um, we're kind of stretching it a little mm -hmm. bit because um, I know with um, specifically with with events, and, and I'll let Alan kind of speak to this um, as well. But um, we're essentially uh, supporting events um, and like technologies like Kafka um, specifically um, by kind of introducing a new um, schema, like an API schema called Async API. Um, it's it's in the Open API um, community. This new Async API schema, um, and uh, it's it's essentially like an evolution on Open API three. Um, and it's specifically made for this uh, kind of streaming um, type of technology. Um, and like, it's still an API in the sense that um, we still have kind of like a, a standard for how um, we're kind of interfacing with this, um, with this, with, with programs and with the, with the data. Um, it's just a different way for us to do that, uh, a different interaction, I guess, because we have the request response interaction. And as Alan said, there's the pure notification push or um, like uh, multiple kind of events, um, inter types of interactions. Um, so I, I guess we're still we're we're still seeing them as APIs. We're kind of broadening um, the the kind of concept of APIs. And in in the title of this roundtable, we're calling it multi endpoint management. Right. Um, we're kind of stretching instead of just calling it API management, kind of having it narrowly focused. We're saying okay, um, there one type of endpoint is an API, um, and that can be broadened as much as we can. But we're also looking to expand this um, beyond that as well. Hmm. Yeah, just just build, building on that answer, I I actually think that's that's a, a really interesting question because I, again may, maybe I've just been uh, I 
I've been in the industry a little bit too long. But when I first started, kind of APIs was uh, wasn't specifically tied to REST at all. Actually, it was kind of just a way that your your program interacted with something else, and that's kind of how we thought about it. And then the uh, what I think of as the REST revolution uh, took hold, and really what uh, that wasn't about like oh we've suddenly discovered like an interface to things, but it it suddenly became commonplace to present people with a relatively ubiquitous um, and easily accessible programmable interfaces to a whole bunch of systems. And that was like the, like the golden age of mashups where you'd find people combining you know, two or three different kind of APIs into one application. We've got some really cool innovation. I think the industry is now kind of um, uh, kind of taken that as a, as a kind of uh, a launch pad to now so almost kind of revert back to like where we were before, which is thinking about REST is great. It's given us access to an awful lot. But now we're looking for better ways of interacting with those systems, new ways. And which is why, uh, just picking up on a, a previous discussion point, it's not about replacing REST at all. Like REST is still kind of at, at the core of how we probably think about interacting with systems, but it's about adding new ways that are kind of more fit for purpose for certain specific use cases, which is where, yes, absolutely graph and soap have, have come in, which, but also why we fully anticipate to see kind of uh, event driven becoming a first class citizen and all of the event streaming APIs to become first class citizens sat right alongside those uh, different forms of interfaces. So yeah, I, I think it is definitely a um, a good observation that we are stretching and broadening what it means to be an API, but I think that is an entirely a good thing, and I expect to see more of it as well. That's great. I, I love the fact that you mentioned the word uh, mashup as well. It was, it's one of my favorite things of the last 10 years where we kind of stopped saying mashups now. Maybe that will make a comeback now, I don't know, but yeah, that sounds maybe. Maybe it's just how long I've, I've been around. I'm, uh, I feel so sad. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. I was thinking the other day, my dissertation for, for my degree was uh, web enabling Oracle developer 2000 with APIs, right? And that was back in 1999. So I'm also kind of old in that respect as well. <laughs> but guys, I, I have a challenge for you then. Basically, um, at my previous company, before I started APIable, um, I worked for an elevator company, a famous one here in Helsinki called Connor. And um, <clears throat> in terms of streaming uh, APIs, right? So the elevator itself is floating up and down in the building. It's constantly giving information about its status, right? You know, speed, what level it's at, you know, weight of occupants and um, whatever they have, you know, coming in. And we said, okay, great. We want to get that and provide it for our API portal. And then we were kind of challenged at this point because uh, we were only, it was only possible to expose that as like a REST API, right? Um, th there was no possibility to do anything else. I think you're, you're bang on the money here because we were very limited at that point and we kind of walked away from it uh, and trying to find some workarounds. But, you know, when you take like a streaming API and, and you wrap a RESTful API, it's like taking a Ferrari and exchanging the engine for, you know, a Ford or something. I'm nothing against Fords, but, you know, I, it felt a little bit that way. I mean, are, are you trying to tell me now we're at the point where, you know, I can have my streaming API? I think we're, we're very much at that point. And, and there's a couple of, couple of reasons for that. One is, I think what REST did for the industry as a whole was, a, a, a clear level set, right? It built on top of a ubiquitous technology and it made it accessible to all. And at the time, um, as you were just uh, as you were describing, I don't think we really had that in an asynchronous space. We didn't really have a set of protocols that were really both widely adopted and easily accessible in, in a range of languages. And I think we are heading in that direction or we're fast maturing in that direction. So I think that, that helps. We're seeing a lot of standardization um, there. Um, what I think it's really interesting, actually, that you also picked up on a uh, essentially an IoT kind of example, right? Instrumented elevators flowing around a building, and I think that is um, the reason I, I really like that example is because it it can it really allows you to to think about kind of the power of what you can unlock here, because I think the classic IoT example that everyone always seems to give is around predictive maintenance. So if you've got sensors on an elevator that can kind of monitor how it's behaving and what have you, that feeds that back to some applications you can write that are like looking at that data, looking for anomalies, and then can sh proactively schedule maintenance. Um, I suspect, um, although I don't know, like where you were thinking there is, well, what happens if 
we not only uh, looked at that data from a maintenance point of view, but we made that data available to like the buildings management company or the right. you know, building management software, as in something outside of our ecosystem um, our, or our specific company. And here, um, what well, I've heard some people talk about uh, event-driven ecosystems that are going to emerge in the same way that kind of APIs powered um, a kind of a way of companies collaborating together in a much more programmable way so that you can um, it's really enabled uh, these companies that do kind of you know flight book your flights hotel and car rental and what have you in, in one portal and they farm out all of the kind of uh, uh, actual bookings via APIs now you mm -hmm. can do exactly the same thing but more real time with eventing interfaces. And I think that's a real exciting extension of where IoT has kind of taken us to date. So, um, so uh, yeah, absolutely. I think nice. now absolutely is the time that, uh, that you can go back to your previous previous company and start right, right. making that vision that you had uh, all those years ago a, a kind of reality. That's really cool, yeah, that's really cool. Just, just, just adding on that real quick. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I think um, that, the the ability like alan was saying the ability to start socializing um these these um like uh streaming apis uh, is really the the foot in the door um of kind of getting this this started but once we have our foot in the, the door there and we're able to have one single uh, developer portal where you can access rest apis graphql apis um, and now streaming apis and beyond um, step one is being able to socialize that, have other teams either internally in your organization or externally um, be able to kind of um, essentially like broadcasting it and making them available to everyone. Um, the next step is really being able to start monetizing that. Um, so you have your, your developer portal, you put some security on it, and then you can start um, putting it out externally and you can have, um, you can put like a, a consumption based pricing model or something on there for every um, every gigabyte of data or something that's passed over or for uh, for a certain amount of time or um monetize these in some in, in any way you can think um it is really kind of the next step um uh, of this and kind of looking forward to um a world where we treat all endpoints regardless of whether it's a streaming endpoint or like a messaging endpoint or web sockets or, or you name it um, where we treat them all as we do um, rest apis today where you can socialize my development. And you can eventually start monetizing as you might have. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. So you're saying that they you have like a common security layer, common monetization layer, you know, the developer goes to one developer portal and gets access to all of the endpoints. I think that's very smart very smart and very timely as well I, I had a customer come to me a few weeks back and say they want to provide um you know for events video conference streaming and they want to have like a marketplace of different apis and so on and i did a little bit of research at that point in time and said you know what i haven't found any uh, you know api management vendor who who is able to you know support the the, the variety of endpoints that, that they have so um yeah, kudos. I think you're, you're definitely onto something there and uh, wish you all the best with that. That's about all we've got time for. Um, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I know I enjoyed this one. And uh, yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Thanks so much, Alan. Appreciate, the, appreciate it. And thanks, everyone, for yep. joining. Thanks. Bye-bye.